All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there. Like I said, you're getting lots of MSR points for this, so you get a big thing in one shot here. So uh, uh, it all it all goes real smoothly all the time, right? Just like our putting game, right? Just kind of piece of cake. So anyway, uh, going to take you down a little path today. We 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 tapped into our our left brain a little bit. I'm going to take you into the right brain. Get you to think out of the box, a little creative today. All right, we're going to get you uh, maybe understanding, you know, how how putting putting strokes and grips can evolve and uh, things that we can do to uh, to uh, to get a little better. Um, uh, I've got a little little grip here uh, that's uh, you know a little different, a little unorthodox. And I'm going to take you down that road of of how I got there. So uh, go ahead. Got my lovely assistant here, by the way, my wife Christy, uh, our LPGA uh, uh, teaching instructor at uh, Paramount. So uh, thank you, Christy, highest paid uh, computer operator today. So <laughs> thank you. Lots of ways to roll the golf ball. Uh, Rob LeBritz, conventional stroke. <coughs> People use the conventional way. There's best picture I could get of Mark Brown winning the Men <laughs> Open a few years back. Uh, with the long putter, he won't be able to, uh, I don't know what he's doing right now, but uh, he, he, had a lot of, <laughs> he had a lot of putters. I saw a picture not too long ago, a lot of putters next to us that he was trying out. Grant Sturgeon, he goes like reverse claw belly. belly. I mean, he's got lots of things going on there. Great player, 2014 uh, Met PGA Player of the Year. Matt Dobbins, you guys have probably heard of him. He, he plays right-handed, putts cross-handed lefty uh, and uh, this was his putt that he, he made to win the uh, win the championship uh, this year at Philly Cricket and then you got this guy with this funny thing uh, I was, ch was fortunate enough to play with Bill Murray uh, for one go one hole this year at Paramount his lawyer was a member at Paramount played from one hole and he looked at my grip on the hole and he says that must be something out of Brazilian jiu-jitsu or something <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 Anyway, anyway, that's the best way I can describe that. We'll uh, we'll move on though, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Why do we switch? Why? Why do we switch? Why do we switch putters? Maybe the most famous putter switch of all time. Just press, just one arrow forward. No, arrow forward. Just arrow forward. Spoiling this calls for the old Billy Baru. <laughs> He had a he had a pretty good Thompson in. Oh, I like that purple protector. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and of course. Man. <laughs> Maybe the greatest putter switch of all time, right? Why do we switch? We've gone over some, some topics uh, earlier today, but poor mechanics, right? We're, we're misaligning our putter face or our body line, something's going on. Our putter path, screwy. Uh, we're not hitting it in the center of the putter very well. Technology, as we've heard uh, with Bill, you know, with uh, you know, well, Bobby Grace putters and whatnot, that helps that a little bit, but uh, can't overcome it sometimes. Poor green reading. John Hobbins covered all that for sure. You know, you're not prepared maybe, right? Maybe you're not prepared. You're not adjusting to the speed very well. Uh, you're not seeing or sensing the texture of the green. Uh, that could lead uh, you down a wrong road. Poor routine. You've got an inconsistent way that you get to each putt. Right, you you know you might. What I learned this year, I uh, <coughs> when I saw myself on video, um, I, I learned that I move too quick under pressure. Right, and I'm probably talking faster than I think I'm talking right now. Right, but it's 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 funny how you don't understand sometimes how fast you are moving until you see it from the outside. So maybe it'd be really good to have somebody videotape you in a tournament somehow. Um, you start to see some of your tendencies. Um, 
and uh, you just figure out if it's maybe a routine thing. It leads to no confidence, right? Just, just you just all uh, you're all discombobulated, right? So why do we switch, right? So a lot of these things can be interrelated and can blend with one another. Mechanics can lead to poor green reading. Poor green reading can lead to poor mechanics. Uh, all that stuff is all, everything's intertwined in this game. You know, putting is intertwined with full game, full swing, right? When we're putting great, it takes the pressure off our full swing, that sort of thing. So a lot of, a lot of parts of the game are intertwined. And now a putt for Eagle. For Dustin Johnson to win the United States Open. what they were thinking. Scott Hoke's another one that comes to mind. Uh, he said he was thinking about the, the speech he was going to make, uh, you know, after he missed that, sh before he missed that short little putt at the Masters in the playoff against Nick Faldo in uh, 1989, I think it was. So, Just Wikipedia talks about a lot of things. Uh, you can look a lot of this up by yourself. Popularized by Tommy Armour, the name. Uh, really interesting. It affects more uh, between one quarter and one half of all mature <coughs> golfers. Yips. I don't know if you, if, you had, if you ever hit a putt and you felt like an electric eel was going off in your hands, it, it, it's not a good feeling, all right? So you want to stay tuned to this, this grip that I'm talking about later, but uh, go ahead. Uh, the exact cause of the yips yet to be determined, but, you know, it, 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 I'll, I'll give you my experience. It's basically... Uh, you know, I, I played a lot of high pressure golf for a long time, and uh, you know, some some of these strokes just don't start feeling so good because of all the the, the high pressure. Wikipedia, I thought this was really funny. Giving up golf for a month may help. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did that back in college. And my my coach said, put your clubs in the attic for three weeks, and uh, you know, it did it didn't hurt. <laughs> it didn't hurt. So this off season, maybe, uh, maybe that's uh, what you should do. I don't know, but maybe you should practice too. Some of the golfers <laughs> afflicted by the yips. Uh, Bernhard Langer won. Harry Barden way back. Ian Baker Finch couldn't hit. Uh, he couldn't hit the, the, the first and 18th fairway combined at St. Andrews. All right, so something was going on up there uh, that put him to the uh, commentating booth. Uh, interventions looking to treat the yips have been few and far between. Uh, maybe a different grip, maybe you'll try some sort of, some sort of strategy. Golfers who have played for more than 25 years appear to be most prone to the condition, with some younger exceptions. <coughs> I'm Steve Scott and I have the yips. <laughs> I've had the yips since I was 19 years old. Uh, it's, it's something that is, you know, it kept me really from pursuing my dream of being, uh, you know, being out there on Sundays and playing, uh, you know, playing on the tour. I think it was something that, um, you know, it really, it really got to me. It was one of those things that, uh, that got me um, <coughs> when, I, when I wanted it the most and I needed it the most. Uh, it was at Q School uh, my very first year uh, in 1999. Breezed through first stage, no problem. Got to second stage, I'm in second place. All of a sudden, I'm really close to my dream. I'm really close. And I shoot 75, 77 in the last two rounds of the Q School to miss by two. And I went from the mountaintop to the abyss. I plummeted so fast. Uh, no parachute would have been able to uh, to hold me back, but anyway, it was uh, it's it's been it's been really interesting. So it's been an interesting journey that I'm going to take you on. I got to get a grip. 
And I've used a lot of them. I've used a lot of putting grips, a lot of putting styles. Uh, if, if, if you can putt conventionally and you're a great putter, oh, God bless you. <laughs> you're, you're, you're my hero. Uh, if you're not, if you're not, well, some of these things maybe I'm, I'll, I'll share with you. But I putted conventionally, I guess 1982, I was five years old, so I'll, I'll start there. Uh, uh, to 1998, uh, that, that span of time, putted conventionally, won two Florida State high school championships. Uh, had my great run in the U.S. Amateur for two years in a row. I made it to the semis the year before. Some people don't know that. Uh, 1997, Dogwood Invitational, I won it. But I, I hit a few putts towards the last few holes. I had a couple, like, short two-footers. And even though I made them, I was putting conventionally, and I felt something. I'm like, uh-oh. I, I, I kind of said, and I filed it away. I didn't want to think about it. I felt it. I made the putts. I won the tournament, but it didn't feel good. Then I moved on. I went to the Dave Pell School, a little plug for Pell's, but went to the Dave Pell School at the end of 98, and I was trying to find something. The Bernhard Langer, short putter method, right? Boom, the clamp, the, the, the Bernhard Langer clamp. That worked awesome. It regained my confidence like that. Um, it, was, it was a really, uh, you know, it, it, and the confidence ended at that Q school I just mentioned. But um, I won five events that year. I hadn't won a college event uh, my freshman, sophomore, junior year. And I thought I was a pretty good player, you know. I, I, I thought I should have won an event, and I didn't. I got to the spring of my senior year, my last chance to do anything. I won three out of four events in the spring of my senior year at Florida with uh, the Bernhard Langer method. And then towards the end of the year, uh, the Western Amateur was, uh, was kind of uh, the culmination of that grip, the, the, the peak of that grip. I won, uh, I won the Western Amateur, I won the stroke play and the match play portion, uh, beating Andy Miller in the finals there. Shot 62 in the second round of stroke play. Adam Scott was in the field, uh, Aaron Baddeley, uh, Eric Compton, a lot of great players, Jeff Quinney, U.S. Amber champ was in there, so. Then, after that Q school, when I lost, I lost all sense of putting. I, it, was, uh, it was out of control. Played with a guy at a mini tour event, and a Golden Bear tour event, and I was putting so bad, he was putting long putter, and I said, let me give that a shot. He gave it a shot, I put it, I bought one, went right to a store, bought one, put it into play the next day without even hardly practicing with it, had 25 putts that day. I'm like, oh, this is going to work. This, this, this anchoring thing is really good, right? So I went on and I used it for most of my, my tour pro career, uh, which spanned about six years from 99 to 2005. Uh, won twice in the Canadian tour with it. Uh, shot a bunch of course records. Uh, you give me a semi-flat green uh, and the long putter and I, I was probably going to make it. I mean, it was uh, just... Uh, I shot a 60, 1200 par pine tree down in, down in Florida, the first time I ever saw it. I mean, I had 23 putts, made everything. Broomstick was, was working. Then, <laughs> then, as I got into the club pro side of the business in 2005, you know, I, I, I went on and off in the long putter. I didn't, I didn't like, I never liked it. I liked the results of the long putter, but I never liked, I almost, I always felt like somebody was whispering in my ear. Man, this Steve Scott was a great putter. Now he sucks. He's using this long, this long putter. Uh, but you know, so I, I went to these other styles. Uh, you know, because I wanted to you know, you play in these greens up north that are really fast and slopey. And you know, I wanted two hands on the putter somehow. Um, so I used the claw, the saw, the pencil, the Demarco, everything I could find. Uh, I won a few mini tours uh, with that in 2004 and five when I was kind of finishing up, but. Uh, you know, nothing ever really came of that. This, this is maybe the funniest slide on the whole thing. A lot of other ways I've putted. I remember the Western Amateur one year, uh, maybe the year before that I won it, I was putting, I tried this guy. You know, I don't know how many holes I tried that for. I'm, I'm sure everybody's tried probably, you know. Leo Deagle, incidentally, was the very first golf pro uh, at what is now Paramount Country Club for Adolf Zucor, who was the founder of Paramount Pictures, so kind of interesting. Uh, the belly putter turned, in, turned into the long putter. I don't know if anybody's ever done that one. Uh, that was, I uh, had the brilliant idea. I'm, in the, I'm going into the final round of the uh, nationwide tour event, uh, now web.com tour at the time. 
at, uh, in Calgary, Alberta. And I'd made a cut, I was doing all right in 2004. And I had some brilliant idea come to me and I said, you know what, I'm gonna try the belly putter today. I think that's gonna work. And never tried it before in my life. And um, needless to say, it lasted about two holes because I yipped it on the second green from about here. And, and, and I'm playing with Dave Stockton Jr. at the time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the great Stockton family. And so, so I'm, I'm, I've got the belly putter and I got this thing down here. And I, I mean, I look like, I mean, a, a long putter version of Michelle Wee. Christy was caddy for me, actually. Uh, you should have seen it, it was, uh, it was priceless. I, I think I shot 71 that day. I actually made some putts like that, uh, but I threw that one in the garbage really quick. I won my first pro tournament putting with my eyes closed. Another way I've done it. I mean, I mean it's pretty, it, I, I, pretty I, good there. I had a putt on the last hole. I mean, I used it for the whole final round. I think maybe it was both the rounds. It was a two-round event called the Bex Open in Fort Myers Country Club in Florida. And I get on the last, last green. I've got, uh, let's see, Nolan Hankey is off to the side of the green. George McNeil, they're all, you know, the local guys, and they're playing well. And Anyway, I've got this putt. We're all six under par, and I was, this is to break the log jam. And I get in Christie's caddy for me again. I said, should I do it with my eyes open or closed? <laughs> I don't know if you ever asked it on the last green of a tournament to win a tournament, but uh, she said, just do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> so, so I got over, it, closed my eyes, Bernhard Langer, that baby, right in there, and, uh, and won $10,000. Uh, uh, big, big money for uh, my, first, uh, my first pro win. You know, for me, a new grip led to a new state of mind. It got, it got me, it, got, it made me new again. Right? Like anybody's ever tried a new putting grip, you know, and I'm sure you've tried a few uh, different ones. Anytime you get that new one, it's like, hmm, that feels good. I, I might shoot the course record today, right? I might, uh, I, I might, uh, I might be a world beater. I played with Woody Austin in the uh, in the finals of Q School PGA West one year, and Woody used three different putting styles on one green. <laughs> Famous, you know, bang the head guy. But, uh, so, a lot of different ways to do it, but it leads, you know, you gotta trick your brain every opportunity you get, right? Every, every <laughs> chance you get, you gotta, you gotta keep mixing it up up here, or else something, you know, it stays too constant, something might be, uh, might be a little screwy. So I gotta get a grip. So no matter how I putted, usually I found some common threads. There were some, com there were some commonalities to how I putted. You, you want to make each putt into a singular separate event, right? Not one carrying over the next from one putt to the next. Don't let one green carry over the next green. Don't let one round carry to the another round, right? You've got you've to isolate them and compartmentalize each and every putt because every, every situation is different. Every speed is different. Every, every read is different. Everything's different, right? You have a lot of different putts. You want to establish a simple, repeatable, and automatic routine, right? That's going to put your brain on autopilot. That's going to get you focused. It's just going to make the whole thing flow without you even thinking about it. If you've ever had a routine that's been so sound and you just get, you're very deep into a tournament and you're on that, you know, the 50th hole of a 54 hole event and your routine is so good and you hit the putt, you leave the green, you make the putt, you walk off the green, you say, I don't even remember hitting that putt. And, and, and until your routine is that good, right, where you just, it just flows and it just goes and it's just so autopilot you don't even remember it, um, it, it might not be solid enough yet. So, so work on it, make it, I mean, to the second you want that routine to be automatic. Here's a guy who has a pretty good sound putting routine. The 12, Dave Stockton. This is for Birdie. He doesn't need a lot of work on his putting. Probably one of the best putters ever in the game. Well, he's teaching so many guys right now. He and his sons are teaching so I like a lot of what Stockton preaches. A lot of it, he's just, it's very unconscious putting. I guess that's his, uh, his term. But you just want, you want your brain to go over here and you want your stroke to just come out. Everybody knows how to putt. 
Putting is the most fundamentally simple motion in the game. We're not moving, we're not shifting, we're not turning, we're not doing any of that. It's all here. This is where putting is. Keegan Bradley does it pretty good. I don't know, Frank, no, Frank Darby's not here, but uh, he'd like this slide. But um, you want to stare down the hole. One thing I did, I remember, uh, I remember specifically in the 95 U.S. Am at Newport, um, and, and one of the things, you know, because you've got, when you're playing golf and you get, you get in those nervous situations that you practice for, and what, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of mental distractions. Sometimes the mind races very quickly, and sometimes the mind goes very slow. Um, one thing in particular, um, from the 95 to the 96 U.S. AM, I was so nervous in the semifinals of the 95 AM, I was playing Buddy Marucci, um, that I, I was, everything just went fast. I mean, my, my brain was, I was looking at the galleries, I was looking at the, I, I wasn't locked into what I was doing. Everything was moving very fast. So the next year, I got to the semis again, I was playing my teammate, Robert Floyd, and, you know, the Masters is on the line, like, it's like the biggest thing I've ever done. And, but I took the experience from the year before, and, and so what I do, and I do it, I do it to this day, and, and I don't do it all the time, but um, I, I hope to do it all the time is I want to stare down a piece, of, a piece of grass in the hole or a piece of dirt or, or some sort of marking in the hole where my eye can lock in on. You know, it's like, like a basketball, uh, like shooting a basketball, right? You want to get your brain, there's so much distraction, people walking, cars going, whatever. You've got to get your eyes locked in. Where's that ball going to go? And that helps you become unconscious, I think. That helps you just kind of... Like you just look at it and you go. I, I feel like I always putt my best when the hole, when I play on courses where the hole is painted, painted white, because my eye, it just, it just zones in on the hole easier. I don't know if anybody else has ever found that, but my eye tends to lock in on where I want to go better. You don't want to try to make the putt, kind of like I just said. You use that, uh, use that hole and that focus to let, to just react. Right? Easy to say, you probably heard it a thousand times, but how many times did you actually do it? How many times did you actually just let it go like you're shooting a basketball? So next time you play, just try to go out there and just pretend you've got a, somebody's passing you the basketball, and boom, 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 poof, and you just let it go. <coughs> One of the most important things I've done is create positive mental images of past successes. Right? Everybody's had something that they've done well, whether it's a great putt they made, in, in you know junior golf, college golf, somewhere, somewhere, assistance tour event, anywhere, where anything you can do to your brain to give yourself confidence, even if it was playing, you know, you had a big putt on the 18th hole with some members, and you end up winning fifty dollars off off of some member. You play <coughs> your cases. Use those positive uh, experiences to fuel your putting. Right? It's easy, very easy to to speak negatively about your game and have those poor images in your mind, but lock the great images in. I spoke about that a lot last year. Uh, imagery is, is, is tremendous uh, if, if you use it properly. Uh, one thing, I, I've done a little work with Mike Breed, and he, uh, uh, he, he, he said he taught one guy one time, he, he, he told the, the, the man to tell his wife that for 30 days straight that he was the greatest putter in the world. The guy, he, that, was his, that, was his, that was his routine. He had to do it. And uh, so, and I, I think the result was he, uh, he turned out to be a better putter. But the more you say it, the more you see it, the more you can do it. You've got to see it before you achieve it, in essence, right? 2012, my play was ugly. It was awful. This was, this was you know, I kind of knew, you know, I'm messing with all these different putting styles, like I mentioned before. Um, long putter claw, I don't know what I was doing. It seeped into my long game. I was a mess. Uh, lots, of, lots of really, really, really bad finishes. If any of you played with me recently, you'd look at these and you'd say, same guy? No, I, uh, not the same guy, right? Uh, but, I mean, 80s, look at all these rounds in the 80s. 80, 80, 80, 83. I mean, I was a mess, I, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to absolutely quit the game. <clears throat> but 
in my basement on a cold, dark, snowy morning. Christy loves listening to this story. I had this vision. I'm putting down there in the basement on the putting green with my little boy. At the time, he was, he was five, I guess. Maybe not even five, four and a half. And I thought, what if I took the best parts of what I've done and apply them with some of the things that I see the best players in the world do? Right? What if I did that? What would happen? with tennis wrap tape that I, that I uh, adorn it with. So what I do is, is <coughs> the tennis wrap really helps me kind of lock it to my arm a little bit. Helps, you know, when it gets really sweaty, I gotta towel it off a little bit. But, but one of the things that I really like about this grip is the upright nature of the grip, right? <coughs> uh, go ahead and you can zoom into that. This was actually uh, Daryl Kestner. Kestner teaches this. I haven't had any lessons from Kessner, but this is the only lesson I need right here, right? The left wrist, you see the wrist bones arched a little bit, right? And you go to Steve Stricker, same thing, very upright, very upright, okay? So I, I took that facet, right? Go ahead. I, I really like what Stricker says about this grip. I won't get too wordy, and you can re-Google this all you want, but uh, I think it's important for you to listen to this. I like to grip the putter fairly tight in my left hand. Probably a seven on a scale of one to ten, but my right hand grip is considerably lighter. I'm a left hand dominant putter, and the two grip pressures reinforce the feeling that my left side will be controlling the stroke. Left side. I also don't want the feeling of the face twisting, even the slightest, when I strike the ball. I grip the putter in the palm of my left hand, not the fingers. It's resting on my lifeline. This gives me a feeling of unity between the putter shaft and my left arm. So I took that and filed that away. That was part one of the grip. Part two, this guy's a pretty good putter. He, he, was, a, he was a good putter before he went to this, and then he became better. Right? If anybody remembers, I mean, it was probably five years ago when he switched or something, right? But so my grip, it runs up the left forearm, just like Kutcher. Right? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to flip this thing. I want to make sure. I hit a lot of putts actually. I do a lot of practicing. Left hand only. I want to feel the pressure, the top butt end of the grip, right into my forearm, right? So I hit a lot of left-handed putts like this to gain a sense of, of what the face is doing with my left hand. And then when I, put one, when I put the other hand on, it seems to be a piece of cake, all right? The way I do it. Then I took Bernhard Langer. This guy was, this guy was pretty good. He's going to have to do a, a, a different type of putting style. This guy's had the yips since he was probably a teenager too, I think I read. Um, but the shaft kind of gets locked into place now, right? He's locking it to his left forearm instead of just gripping it like Kutcher. Quiets the hands, offers major stability. We want the putter face to be stable. We don't want any sort of twitch in the stroke. And then the final part was Chris DeMarco. Now, I, I took this. And then I said, why don't, why don't I just kind of do it like DeMarco, but then attach it to my arm, right? Go ahead and probably, probably remember the, this part. <laughs> That putt right there actually made me go to his style for a while back at the end of 2005. Uh, worked pretty well. My put, it took my right hand and it put it in a more submissive position instead of a, you know, it wants to be, I'm a right-handed player by nature, so my right hand, when, it, when anybody yips a putt, most of the time it's with the dominant hand, 
right? It's the it's this motion. It's not really the left. Could be, depending on what happens, uh, who you are. But for me, it was definitely the right. I had to keep this right hand at bay. I I probably thought better putting it in my pocket at some point out there. <laughs> Haven't tried that one, but I'll go back one second. So one thing, it, it, this stroke, it basically works like a piston. My right hand, it works, uh, it just, it only can do is just go back and forth. When I put it in this pronated position, it can go back and forth. When I used the Bernhard Langer method back in 99 that I did, like there's still, because my hand is not in that pronated position to start with, I could still kind of kick my elbow out or something, you know, it just didn't, it didn't control my right hand very well. It just didn't do it, but but um, you know, the reason why the DeMarco thing goes because now my hand I can't pronate it anymore. I can't rotate the putter face. I physically can't do it. So I mean I had to do something where I physically couldn't, you know, mess up, and that's that's how it worked. And this Gator clamp is uh, the results are are staggering for me. They they've they've been a tremendous turnaround. Now now. You know, this may, something like this in your game may, uh, you know, may manifest itself by a different grip. You know, the gator clamp, just like everything, just like aim point, just like, it's not a be all end all, right? But if you've had any sort of putting issue where you, your hands don't behave, give it a shot. It's, it's, it's something that has worked for a player uh, uh, that has played at the level that I've played at that you know, I had to find a way to be competitive again. I was tired of sucking, <laughs> to put it plain and simple. I was tired of it. And uh, you know, I, remember, I remember getting to that, it was the 2012 Met PGA Championship, and I get to that scoring table. Kevin Rodin was probably caddying for me. Charlie was at the table. I mean, I'm throwing my scorecard down with 83. And granted, it was a tough day, but you know, and, and I just, I couldn't do that anymore. I mean, Steve Scott is a competitor. I am not, I'm not a guy who's going to just kind of show up and I, I've got to be in the ball game some way and shooting 83, you're not in the ball game. So I had to find this way to get it done. So I've had some pretty good successes with this as you probably have read. Uh, the course record at 64th century was a, a key turning point to that. Even though I choked it in the second and third round because I couldn't hit the ball, uh, I still finished fifth in that tournament. That, that event gave me confidence. It started my upward trend. All right, I made it to the sectional qualifying of the U.S. Open in a few years. Uh, this last year, played in my first PGA <laughs> National Professional Championship at Philly Cricket. Um, three shots out of making the PGA Championship. So, so from three years ago to now, to almost making the PGA and almost making these U.S. Opens, uh, um, I, I feel like the, the Gator Clamp has gotten me back. It's gotten me to where I really want to be. Uh, recently, I shot 66 at Baltimore Country Club in a tailor-made uh, classic event and won, uh, in one by five shots. I had a great upward trend uh, in the PGA points list, and my scoring average has gone way down, uh, and hopefully I'll be under 72 this year. Um, so, you know, again, the Gator Clamp is not the be-all, end-all, but if you've got issues with your putting, you've you got to give it a shot. I'll take any questions anybody has. Uh, you know, I thank you for your, your time and sticking around so long. And uh, but any questions anybody's got uh, about the grip, about anything, Fusky. Steve, what uh, what length putter do you use? Good question. I use a uh, 36 and a half uh, inch putter uh, with six and a half degrees of loft. Uh, this is my gamer right here, um, and and so and what I found over the last few years is that. You know, you talk about fast greens and and or slower greens and your launch angle uh, that you or your how your ball comes off the uh, the putter face. I've definitely found that that the faster the green, I can have like five degrees of loft because I and as I set up to it, you can see there's a pretty good angle right here, right? So I need the loft like Kuchar does, right? But when I um, you know, if I play a real slow Bermuda, or if I play like a, a grain, even though they're not slow, they're kind of grainy, the greens at, uh, at the bridge, they're great greens, but they've got a lot of grain to them. So, you know, it, I don't know, I don't find myself maybe making as many putts on those greens. So I've had to kind of evolve 
making sure my lofts are right. And so, you know, this putter, I've got a, it's a Kevin Burns I use. Uh, sorry, Taylor Main, but uh, it's a Kevin Burns I use. And I can, it's pretty soft. I can, I can uh, change the loft really easily on this thing. So um, it's just a little, a little tweak. John? Yes, uh, two things. One, grip pressure right and left mm -hmm. and ball position. Uh, grip pressure, it's very much along the lines of what Stricker, what Stricker likes. Um, you know, done. it's, it's, I mean, I could really putt one-handed if I wanted. Uh, and when you look at it from this fashion, as I grip it, it almost looks like I do. When people watch me, they say, you putt one-handed? <laughs> I said, no, I've got this thing kind of in here, but um, to help stabilize it. But, I mean, there's nothing that my hands can do. Right? I can't, I, I, I mean, I just can't. If, and, and the firmer I grip it, I almost putt better. You feel you're guiding with left? I'm guiding with my left, but almost like the firmer I grip it with my right, I almost putt better because I can't twist it at all. Like there's no, I mean, it's just very, it's just stable. It's just like, I don't know, it's, it's just stable. Kids like you better? <laughs> yeah, they, my kids, incidentally, they always say, Daddy, what's your funny putting grip? You're doing this. What about say, don't use it if you don't have to, Jason. Yeah, don't use right, it. Maybe you got your mother's jeans. <laughs> uh, what about ball position? Ball position, sorry. So I'll use it if I've got a logo on my shirt or something. It's definitely a little forward. You know, I don't want it way back and have a lot of a lot of putter lean way back here because I feel like I'm jamming it into the ground. So I mean I like to have a lot of rise angle through my through my stroke. So um, so with the nature of how it sits on my left arm, I almost force myself to you know, I like to I like to feel like I'm promoting a lot of top spin on the ball. Almost like if I had a if this is a if, if I was rolling a ball, I would want I want my hand to go this way. You know, just like I want the putter to kind of rise like that and produce a lot of top spin. So my effective loft at impact is is I, Kirk measured it one time. I mean, it's like I mean, it's not much really. I don't have much loft on it. Close to zero. Sorry. Or close to zero. You rise in. You have like zero. Yeah, it was it was not much. So so you know I just try to like I try to impart topspin on the ball. Really, um, you have a as far as backswing stroke through swing stroke. Do you have a certain ratio that you like? I don't go for ratios. I go for you know I look at the hole and I just you know I I kind of I treat putting and I know I know you your uh, you know your your process is both analytical and feel um, and or kinesthetic we'll call it. You know, I, I putt my best when it's all just kinesthetic, when it's all just kind of like, there's the hole and I'm putting. I mean, I don't think of any ratio, like, I, I, don't think, I don't think you can think about that when you're under the heat and think of, okay, I gotta go two to one. I, I, I mean, I agree. I, 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 yeah, I, I personally cannot do that, so. And do you, you know, feel like you're by this? Sorry? Do you feel confident enough with this that you're by it? That I'm, that I'm buying. Yes. That you've gone beyond the yes. <clears throat> oh, uh, well, it's been, it's so consistent that I don't feel like I, I mean, I need to practice, but even when I don't practice, it comes back to me very quickly. Because this is quite the long and winding route. Right? It is. is. I've used I never realized you had that much I, difficulty. And not a lot of people know you. that, <laughs> not a lot of people know of my putting troubles. People, people think, wow, Steve Scott is this great putter, you know, well, and I, I, go ahead. Your, your background, though, I would say, because I, I met Steve Scott when he was playing at Coral Springs High School. I was playing mini tours down in Florida. We had a lot of mutual friends that, that he played with. He was absolutely known as the best putter in the entire area. Pro, it doesn't matter who. I mean, Steve, he made everything when he was 16, 17 in high school. I mean, it was, so it, it's funny because sometimes we look at someone who gets a year to go, oh, would they ever, but he was an incredible putter. I, I had no baggage at that point. And then all of a sudden, I played all this high pressure golf, and you know, and and I and and that, and then internal pressure to, to keep producing that high level golf, I think led to it. Um, and you know, I, I didn't ask for it. I don't want it, uh, but I've got it. And and just like Bernhard Langer, obviously he has a hell of a lot more success than I had on the golf course. But I feel like I, I've. I think the lesson that, that I can pass on to everybody today is that, and, and, and you can learn from what I've done, is that I, I feel like I've been to a mountaintop of sorts of putting, I've been to the abyss, and now I'm climbing back up that mountain, right? I'm, 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 and these are the things that have helped me make that climb. And, and, you know, if they work for you, if one of the things works for you, if 
all the things work for you. Hey, you know, that's all I'm here for. I love sharing. I love, uh, I love being part of this section and, uh, and helping people. So, John? Uh, I, I gotta ask, with the <coughs> anchoring ban now in effect, <laughs> Is not is that not considered anchored against your arm? It is not. No, it is not. If you if you you can actually see the uh, uh, some a couple of USGA like pamphlet pictures, you may have actually even seen this grip on there. Like they 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 have a guy doing this. It has to be if the butt end of the club is above the elbow, it's considered anchoring. Like okay. if you had a putter like way up here, but when it's below like this and like this, it's not. It's it's just like it's just like how Kuchar does, but I just kind of yeah. so it's it's not fixed to a point on my body this way. It's moving. So it is yeah exactly the whole the end of the club is moving. So fortunately no, and that's really at the end of 2012 was when the USJ announced that uh, that the anchor ban was going to come into effect this year, and it happened to just kind of coincide with uh, you know a few months later me figuring this grip out because I knew I couldn't putt with a long putter. I had to abandon that at some point. So I had to figure something else out because all these other strokes were kind of working, but they weren't, they weren't to the level that I wanted. Anything else? Oh, sorry. What about the tennis? Why did you choose the tennis, the tennis grip? How does that work in, in, in changing? And it means and there's so many different groups out there, and, and going to yeah, and, you know, Josh, that. it's just my preference. It's uh, it just helps kind of keep it a little tacky against my arm. I try to find the most tacky uh, tennis wrap that I can find. Um, and what I've done is I've actually kind of uh, you know I, I I've actually built up a little <coughs> below the grip so I can I can make the end a little bit longer. I can make it a little bit a little bit longer, just a just a fraction, so I can. So I can do that, you know, I found that, uh, it, and, and this grip, this gator clamp really works best with a thinner grip than a thicker grip. The super stroke grip, I can't really use it because I can't get my whole hand around the, the grip and then my arm and all that stuff, so that's too much going on. Thanks everybody, I really appreciate it.